finding from us this evening, technology on the cutting edge. We were interested today to hear that more than 100 law enforcement officials in Mexico are having microchips implanted in their arms. The chips allow a person to be scanned, sort of like a cereal box at the supermarket checkout. In Mexico, this will be one more tool in the fight against crime. Here's ABC's John McKenzie. You've seen it before, right out of Hollywood. It's maybe a little uncomfortable. A microchip inside the body. A hidden, high-tech identification tag. They're the access codes to your job spot. Now, Mexico's Attorney General and 160 of his deputies have had microchips in... Unfortunately, the modern church's reliance on their pastors to spoon-feed them just the Babylonian-approved Cliff Notes version of End Times Prophecy has put them in the most dangerous position possible, where they think they know what the mark is, and they're ready to strap on the old army helmet and go down in a blaze of fire in rejecting it, when in reality most of them have in fact already willingly received the mark of the beast in their church a long time ago. Now if you ask people whether or not they have been given the mark of God upon their hands and as frontlets between their eyes, they'll probably have no idea what you're talking about. Well, guess what? Everyone pretty much has a mark already, whether they know it or not. And our eternal fate rests on whose mark you have. Now, just to get this out of the way, I'm not a Lutheran, a Calvinist, a Mormon. I'm not working for Baptists, Catholics, Evangelicals, Jews, or Adventists. I'm just a dude who can read what the scriptures say. So don't think I'm here to convince you to go to some church. I myself am not into playing church. I'm just here to share what the word itself says so that whosoever has ears can be at least aware of of which mark they may have received. So what is a mark anyways? If you go outside a church and do a survey of people coming out of what the mark of the beast is, you'll probably get answers like, it's a barcode tattoo on your forehead, or it's a, it's a microchip implant that the New World Order will use to track us. Or if you go to like a heavy metal concert and ask what the mark of the beast is, They'll give you those devil horns and they'll growl, The mark of the beast is sex, sex, sex. Why don't we actually know what the mark of the beast is for sure? Because we haven't actually read the book. Out of sloth, we have based our beliefs upon what other people have told us. We don't want to read the book. We instead would just ask our uncle, who will regurgitate what his pastor has regurgitated, what he has learned from his seminary professor, who has regurgitated to his class what he has learned in systematic theology books and denominational commentaries, which were written by guys who twisted what they had read in the scriptures to line up through the wavy goggles of whatever denomination they were trying to defend. By the time we, the sheeple, actually get a taste of it, the food has already been eaten, digested, and excreted, and then eaten again and digested and excreted many, many, many times before it ever comes to our plate. A lot of times when you dig through what a professional preacher has regurgitated to you, you're going to find all kinds of things besides the scriptures that someone else has eaten and gotten into the mix way back the line someplace. In other words, by the time the word gets to us, it has been corrupted. We should rather eat the word of God fresh for ourselves and see how much healthier we turn out to be. And we all have the ability to do that. We all have access to the scriptures. Now, Revelation is the last chapter in the Bible, and it is expected that whosoever reads it has already become intimate with all that led up to it in the rest of the book. As for the mark, there are actually a lot of places in the scripture where people are given marks, both good marks and bad marks. Now, a lot of people get confused and they get scared 
when they try to read Revelation because it seems so foreign and strange to them. Now, most folks don't realize that the bulk of the information in Revelation is merely explaining, quoting, and echoing things laid out thoroughly and in detail in the Old Testament. You can't hardly get through even a single verse in Revelation without hitting a reference or even a direct quote of the Old Testament. We have no need to argue what Revelation is communicating if we simply let the scriptures define its own terminology. Revelation speaks of two different marks. In the English, one is called the seal of God, and the other one is what we call the mark of the beast. So let's turn back to the foundation of the scriptures and see what the mark of the Lord is first so that we can begin to grasp what the mark of the beast concept is. The word mark in English, according to Merriam-Webster, means to designate, to make or leave a mark onto, or to label. In Hebrew, there are several different words that can mean mark. In Genesis chapter 4, Yahweh sets a mark upon Cain. The original Hebrew word used here is oath which basically means a sign, a signal, or a distinguishing mark. Now, this mark uh, in the Hebrew alf mentioned here is an example of a bad mark, one that you don't want to get. However, the same Hebrew word alf can also be used to describe a good mark. We, we read uh, several places in De Deuteronomy about a good alf that we bind upon our hands and put as frontlets in between our eyes. The English word for alf here is sign. The same Hebrew word that was used to describe the mark of Cain can also be used in this context to describe a good kind of mark, like the mark or the sign of God. Another Hebrew word for mark is shamar. and can also have good or bad connotations. In Job chapter 10, it reads, If I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from my iniquity. Like the mark of the beast, this is a, a, an example of a bad mark, whereas the same exact word in Psalm 37 can be a good one. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. In Scripture, a mark can also be a sign of exemption from judgments as well. Like in Ezekiel chapter 9, the direct parallel to the seal of God situation given in Revelation. And we'll look at that one later. Now, you may have heard that the mark of the beast is the number 666, and that this number can be found in use within the UPC barcode system. How this works is uh, when the laser reads the binary computer language encoded into the lines of the UPC label on your cereal box at the checkout line, the first number 6 is on the edge of the UPC with the slightly longer lines, that is what turns on the computer. In the middle of the UPC, there's another six that uh, the barcode tells the computer to switch characteristics. And then the last six at the end of the barcode turns it off again. Many point out that this same binary code in the UPC is embedded into the radio frequency identification microchips, also called RFID, which are gaining popularity in the world as a new possible form of ID. These RFID microchips would be implanted under your skin, like in your hand or in your forehead, and they would be used for all forms of ID and for monetary transaction. Now let's, uh, let's slow down and take a close look at exactly what the book of Revelation says about this mark of the beast. 